about that? Sorry about that. <laughs> um, good morning, everybody. It is such an honor uh, to be sharing this space with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I love we've already done several uh, what, we, what we, I like to call grounding exercises. Um, so we're going to do another one. Um, <laughs> um, so I invite you to close your eyes, uh, sit up straight in your chair. Um, you can put your hands on your lap. Um, or your chair, whatever feels most comfortable, um, and just feel how everything is very stable beneath you. You don't need to do anything right now, um, but just breathe. You can move your neck from side to side. Make sure that you release your jaw because we hold a lot of tension in our jaws. And now smile. Okay, so as you're breathing, um, think about breathing in intention and non-judgment and breathing out preconceived notions. We're gonna take three deep breaths together and I want you to imagine the air as a bright light. And when you breathe in, the light gets brighter. So make sure you breathe in all the way to your belly. You're gonna breathe in for four seconds, hold each breath for four seconds and then let go for five seconds. So the out breath will be slightly longer than the in breath. And don't worry if you're off a bit, just focus on your own breathing. So let's begin. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. And then one last time. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Now you can open your eyes. Nothing of, signi nothing of significance was ever achieved by an individual acting alone. This is a quote by author John C. Maxwell, and the background photo is called Synergy by David Gerstein. Together, they represent together's theme, today's theme with an emphasis on the beauty and the importance of the concept. What is the meaning of synergy? It's the interaction or cooperation of two or more organizations to produ produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. Also, a mutually advantageous conjunction, compatibility of distinct elements such as resources and or efforts. Now I'm going to take you back to the beginning and sh share with you the story of how I got here. Imagine waking up in the middle of the night looking over at your partner and they're doing this. Are they typing in their sleep? Well, what do you think that a person that is typing in their sleep is dreaming about? Work, right? <laughs> they're probably dreaming about deadlines and how they're going to close their next big deal, typing as quickly as they can so they can get off work on time to beat that rush hour traffic on the 405 and meet their friends for dinner. How do I know this? I know this because that person was me. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed my life in Los Angeles. I had a successful corporate career. I even had a window in my office. <laughs> I worked with an incredibly dedicated team of people, had great friends, and a pretty fabulous social life. I made enough money to travel the world. 
I do love exploring and going on adventures, but over the years, I realized that what truly inspired me about traveling was connecting with people. So I made it my intention each time I traveled to immerse myself in the culture, to live like a local, and to try to understand and experience life the way they did. On one of my most memorable trips, I visited Myanmar, a country that is truly majestic, but has sadly always been in some sort of political turmoil. Out of respect, you're expected to walk barefoot throughout the temples and on any sacred sites. I don't actually recall wearing shoes at all during that trip. Most of the paths in Bagan are dirt roads and there are very few street names. Not a lot of people speak English. And Wi-Fi what? Yet I can honestly tell you that I have never felt so connected to other humans and to the earth, maybe ever. Walking around street markets, watching people laughing, and living happily with what seemed like so little. Then something interesting started to happen. When I would return to the U.S. for my travels, I would have a sort of reverse culture shock. I would come back to my life in Los Angeles, and I would feel a disconnect. Something in the back of my mind, in my heart really, was telling me that there was a different, deeper kind of connection that I longed to experience in my everyday life. Throughout my career, I joined a myriad of organizations and programs. One of those organizations was United Way of Los Angeles with a program called Emerging Leaders. It focused not only on personal and professional development, but also on philanthropy. We contributed to our community by mentoring kids in low-income neighborhoods, cleaning and painting elementary schools, delivering food boxes, and collecting school supplies. But the most impactful experience for me was volunteering at a women's shelter on Skid Row. My office was in downtown Los Angeles, and it happened to be only a couple of blocks away from Skid Row. So with a few steps every day, I began a journey that would change my life forever. My experience on Skid Row was meaningful and incredibly difficult at the same time because it forced me to see the world around me, which had been right in front of my eyes all along. There are countless problems in this world, and it's easy to become overwhelmed because we know we can't solve world hunger and poverty and clean up the oceans. So instead, we tune it all out and often we do nothing. Today, I am proud to say that I am in a room full of individuals that care. Thank you, you use. If we give up, we definitely lose. Trying is the only option. This is a quote by author, activist, and story storyteller Mia Birdsong from the book, How We Show Up, Reclaiming Family, Friendship, and Community. My hope for you today is that you walk away feeling energized and inspired to find creative ways to mutually support one another because that is what builds community. Now on to the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. Scientists and historians will probably be puzzled by this for centuries, don't you think? <laughs> well, as you know, that was only the beginning. All of a sudden, cleaning supplies flew off the shelves, certain food staples went missing, and restaurants had to shut their doors. Food transportation trucks had to be diverted to local food pantries, but storage capacity was being reached within days. That spring, I was volunteering at the soup kitchen, and just like everyone else, we were not prepared for what the pandemic had in store. Food deliveries were coming so quickly that we could not keep up. So unless I wanted to see perfectly good food in the garbage, I knew I had to do something outside of the box. So I filled up my car with crates full of fresh organic produce, started making phone calls, and sending countless Facebook messages. I was really getting worried until a community organizer with a local mutual aid group messaged me back. They told me about a food distribution in the parking lot of the Unitarian Universalist Church that had just started a couple of weeks ago 
because of the pandemic and said that I could bring the food there. When I arrived, I asked if I, if I could help and I was told to jump in. I have been here ever since. Mutual aid may be new to you, but the concept is legendary, with many accounts of it first being practiced here in the U.S. within black communities. Most notably, the Free African Society, a mutual aid network that saved Philadelphia from destruction during the 1793 yellow fever epidemic. Mutual aid focuses on solidarity, not charity, on cooperation rather than competition, on celebrating the skill set we each bring to the table in order to help our communities thrive together. Mutual Aid Partners was founded in August of 2020 as a grassroots-oriented, community-led nonprofit that was formed as a direct response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since we started, we've been able to assist over 30,000 families through the weekly distribution of essential resources, including food, clothing, hygiene products, as well as advocacy and facilitated access to education, sanitation, healthcare, and shelter. The creative collaborations we forged early on helped us to learn that our work could catalyze sustainable change by engaging other community partners and social service agencies. We realized the impact we were creating would be exponentially greater by focusing on cooperative partnerships as well as the positioning of meaningful outreach through a lens of accessibility. During the peak of the pandemic, MAP had a dedicated team focused on COVID-19 relief work specific to quarantine neighbors from the unsheltered community. Through countless volunteers and coordination efforts, we facilitated bringing local agencies together in a collective response that capitalized on each agency's strengths. MAP's collaboration resulted in the delivery of over 7,000 meals, connecting healthcare volunteers to those with barriers to care, and advocacy for access to testing, education, and vaccines for our most marginalized community members. Today, the Mutual Aid Distribution Day is a weekly event open to the public in the heart of downtown Grand Junction. It features a free community choice pantry with fresh produce, frozen meats, shell-stable foods, and personal care as well as a breakfast station, sack lunches, homemade soups. Other resources offered through community partnerships include haircuts and barber services, dog and cat vaccinations, family resource navigation, veteran assistance, tax credit outreach, voter engagement, and so much more. Above all, the distro is an opportunity for meaningful connection and community building a conduit to boost collaboration between community organizations and to provide a platform for neighbors to come together and share in their common humanity. I truly believe that our community became stronger because of the pandemic. We had to get creative in order to tackle unprecedented challenges, which led to deep cultivation of synergy in the nonprofit sector as well. I gave the keynote speech at the Community Impact Breakfast a couple of months ago, presented by Community, um, Community Impact Council. Um, and we did a poll in real time. And we asked everybody in the room to list two to three organizations that they had collaborated with in the last two years. Um, so I don't know if it's big enough, but you can see mutual aid partners in the yellow kind of towards the middle. Um, it was, it was very cool exercise to do. It was very cool to engage and just to see how excited people got. I'm um, just thinking about all the different groups that they worked with. Um, and it was great seeing all those names up on the screen. Um, but I really wanted to emphasize that uh, synergy really starts with people connecting um, because organizations are made up of people, people who believe that working together will have a positive social impact. Synergy then is an innate characteristic of mutual aid. In the nonprofit sector in general, there are limitations to 
to what can be done because of funding restrictions, longevity, bureaucracy, a fixed mindset, and resistance to change, challenges that we are faced with every day, some which were significantly exacerbated by the pandemic, but also now as we adjust to a new normal. These types of challenges are not conducive to true synergistic development. Synergy needs to be flexible, transformative, open to change, authentic, and intentional. A seat at the table is not enough. We need to focus on working alongside and in solidarity with our community. We must listen and engage rather than make assumptions about what is needed. The great news is that we have each other. When I returned to Grand Junction from Los Angeles, I made a conscious decision to stay here because I felt a great energy amongst people invested in the betterment of this community. You are those people. So let's continue to explore meaningful, creative collaborations, perhaps by volunteering with an organization you want to know more about and immersing yourself in their work. And I see a lot of folks and faces that have volunteered with mutual aid, and I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Um, remember that we, we're each a piece of this puzzle we call life, but that we can always use a fresh perspective. The power of synergy and community and through mutual aid means you don't have to solve pro problems alone. So lean on each other instead. Lift each other up and don't forget to share and celebrate your wins. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And, and really, from, from my heart, walking into this room every time, I feel like this incredible energy, and I shared the story last time that when I spoke um, about a very difficult day at the very beginning before I actually filed for incorporation for MAP, and um, and just like thinking I need like a sign that this is what I'm supposed to be doing because it was the hardest thing that I've ever done, and I just remember walking into this room and just like seeing the plants and just like the peace that just came down on me. I I was like, okay. All right, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and every step along the way, with y'all's support, um, it, it really has guided me in, in wh where we are now and everything that we've accomplished, we've accomplished together. Um, and we could not do this without y'all's support. Um, the, this parking lot is transformed every single week and it has meant so much to this community. Um, and so thank you, thank you so much again for your support and your kindness. and. You're the space just to be able to, for us to be authentic and to continue evolving with the needs of the community. And whenever we need to be inside, we can be inside. And um, you know, and just everything that you all have done is, it's been incredibly supportive and wonderful. So thank you again, it's much love to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking here today, Stephanie. 